Okay, so in an earlier video, I covered the process of exporting EDL files from a non-linear editing application, in my case Adobe Premiere, and also rendering out a low-resolution offline version of the edit. Both of these are essential resources for conforming a project. So in this video, I'm going to use these to reconstruct the offline edit inside Nuke Studio, bring it up to native resolution, and then conform the sequence to the offline uh, proxy reference video. So you can see that I've already got Nuke Studio open. I just opened the project from earlier, which I used to, uh, to transcode my original native footage down to uh, down to proxy proxy size. So I'm just going to take those that media now and just delete that out. So we're kind of at the we're kind of back at the start with a, a, a sort of a, an empty project, except that obviously it does have the original edit settings. Okay, so. The best place to be for actually starting this process is in the finishing workflow, which when I changed has, uh, has, has kind of maxed out my screen, so I'll just drag this in to fill the, uh, fill the space that I'm working inside the screen capture software. Okay, so this is the, uh, this is the finishing workspace. Okay. You may well switch to this and, ab and see absolutely no uh, no difference, because which would be because you were already in this uh, in this workspace. But anyway, I digress. I'm now going to import the EDL files. So if you recall from a previous video, um, I um, I created three EDLs for each of the three video tracks and an extra EDL for the audio track. So I'm coming to file import and you can see that there's an option here to import the EDLs so I'm going to choose that now and you can see that I'm in the EDL project and I'm just going to start by uh, by selecting video uh, track 1 and opening that okay the dialog is going to open it's going to ask me if I want to change any of the settings in the import options yours if you're doing this may default to 24 I think it does but in, in this particular case the footage was shot at 25 frames a second so I'm gonna make sure it's that I don't need to change anything else there are no distance uh, differences in the in the destination files so uh, there's certainly no retiming uh, involved in this project so I can just click OK okay that worked pretty quickly and hopefully you can see what's happened here Nuke Studio has essentially recreated the edit um, on the on the timeline. Okay, so this is a mirror, or at least I hope it's a mirror of the edit that we saw in Premiere in an earlier video. It's around about four minutes forty seconds long. Um, okay, we don't yet have our other two video tracks or our audio track, so we'll bring these in now. Okay, so. To do this, I just right click in my timeline uh, and I get the option for new track and you can see there new track from EDL. I'm going to pick that and I'm going to choose video track 2 and open that. Again, this will default to the same uh, to the same import options as I used before, so I can just OK that. And you can see that the green screen clips that were in the track 2 in uh, Premiere are now all present, or at least I hope they're all present and correct in the uh, in the uh, Nuke Studio version of the edit. So same again. I'll just right click again, new track from EDL, and bring in the third track, which, if you recall, was just a single clip over here, and uh, so it's just hosting that. Okay, one last one, which is the audio track. So again, I just right click, new track from EDL, and this time I'm picking A1. Okay, and okay, and you can see that this has actually created uh, the track. It hasn't actually populated it with a clip, which is unusual, uh, but that's not a problem. I'll be able to uh, I'll be able to put that in manually because it doesn't involve an edit. It's just a single a single long clip. The edit's been done already. So I guess the obvious issue is that we're not actually seeing any media. In fact, if we look at if we look up in the project panel, there's absolutely no media yet in this project. So what this means essentially is that all these tracks are currently offline. So the edit has been reconstructed, but these aren't currently actually referencing any media. Okay. So the best way to hook this up is to go into the conforming workspace. So again, I suspect that this will jump out of my screen capture area, which it has. So I'll just drag it back into position and redock it. There we go. 
and the reason why this is the best work works uh, space for this is essentially this which is the um, which is this sort of spreadsheet view and again we get a carry on from the uh, from the timeline in the, in that it actually tells us that the status of our clips are offline so we can see that as I scroll through there every single one of my clips are offline okay so if I just uh, click anywhere in there and hit the space bar you can see that this is pretty much the same as what we saw when I stretched out the project panel in Premiere. It's essentially the metadata for every single one of the clips. So we can see the we can see the ins and the outs as they were set. We can see the the duration of the clip. We can see the destination in and outs. We can see the speed. So we can see that there uh, that there aren't any real retiming issues. There looks like there's a little bit there with the animatic. Um, but uh, but everything else seems I may I may well have done that in the edit just to make sure that it occupied enough of space on the timeline to uh, to uh, you know to obviously conform with the edit. Okay, so everything else is is what you would expect. So if I just click somewhere and hit spacebar again, that will re reassign itself into the into the interface. Okay, so I'm going to bring the footage online now. So the way that I go about this is just to click anywhere in the uh, in, in the spreadsheet and then um, and then just type uh, control A to select everything and then I click the match media button okay so I'll now need to go to my proxy folder and, uh, and just open that okay this is going to bring the conform options out and essentially what this is it's it's really determining ways uh, by uh, the rules essentially by which Nuke Studio uh, will search for clips. Uh, depending on the type of footage that you have and how these were processed you might want to change some of these options but for this project I can leave these as default and just click OK. And you can see that that goes through and you can see that it's reconnected 40 out of 51 clips so it hasn't actually been able to open some. I can understand that in some respects for example the score is, isn't actually in the proxy folder it's actually outside of that uh, it's outside of that folder structure so I can understand that the credits and the titles I can understand it not picking up on those because they um, because they were uh, they were titles that were created in Premiere and I don't really need them anyway but looking through this it does seem to have missed out a load of the stills so I will have to put those in uh, manually okay but we, if we start to sort of flick through a timeline now we can start to see the uh, the edit reconstructing it's just in a few places if I actually just turn off the eyeball on the uh, track 2 and track 3 and we just go through the principal footage it just seems to be in a few places like here where it's where there's actually clean plate still images uh, sat in the space uh, it seems to be these that haven't actually come through and therefore they're offline and we don't see anything in those little placeholders so this is what I need to fix now and there is no real easy way of doing this it's basically a case of going through and fixing this manually okay so I'm gonna start by looking at um, in fact I'll, I'll actually uh, hit the space bar and max it out while we do this and I'm just looking down looking at the, at the score so um, so this, so I'll select both of these uh, both of these clips for the score and then it match meter again this time I need to come out of my project into the audio and there's my score so I can open that now I can, again I can accept the conform options and you can see that that's now reconnected the score so again if I just click the space if I just click the space bar now we should be able to see that the, oh, we, we, we've already established that uh, the score's not in place yet but I guess this was a, is as good time as any to do this so I'm just going to take the score out of the um, out of the project panel now and just drag it in and dock it and it should align perfectly with the end of the sequence and if I play this now we should get some audio there we go okay so back into my spreadsheet now so again just click in there and type space and we'll go through the um, we'll go through the actual uh, images so we've got a garden plate there this has been cut several times so we can see that there's a version there uh, is there any anywhere else? The field house? No, it seems that that's the only one. So I'm going to, with that selected, I'm going to click Match Media. I'm going to come into the proxies. I'm going to choose Stills, and there is the garden clean plate. 
So I'll just open that, select those, and that has reconnected that clip. It's now online, we can see that in green. Behind rock, let's have a look. We've got a couple of instances of that there. Just going through to see if there's any more, which there isn't. So again, I'll match the media on the behind the rock, uh, select it, open it, and that's reconnected those two clips. I have to say that I, I, I don't really know why the uh, why it missed these in the first place. Um, it's sometimes EDLs are a little bit quirky. Okay, this is a field clip. As is this, as is this. This was a clip that, that had been chopped three times, and therefore we've got a, a clip instance for each one. So I'm just going to choose that, open that, and we should reconnect those three of three, which it has. We've got the titles and the credits, which I can't, uh, I can't bring in because these are these were native in Premiere. So the last one is the house still. So I'll select that, and there's the house still, and conform that, bring that in. There we go. So all of the clips are now online, so I should be able to hit the space bar, go back, and we should see that apart from the title and the credits at, at, at either end, we've got a fully, a fully created uh, edit. Okay, and it's looking pretty good. Okay, that looks okay to me. But clearly, we need to deal with the uh, with the sequence resolution. Look at this big border around 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 the outsides of the image. So, the reason why this is the reason why is because when we set our project at the beginning uh, in the sequence settings, these default to 1920 by 1080, um, and you can see down here that the sequence has adopted these settings. Now, my proxy. Render is 1024 by 576, so I need to change this. So I need to come into the output resolution, and we can see the half res down there from when I created the proxies in the first place. So I can just choose that that uh, that format, and we can see that the edit now fills the screen. So if we play this edit now, I will actually turn off the volume because it is really loud. But if we play this now, it should be identical to the Premiere edit. It is worth pointing out the image quality. The compression is really, really noticeable at this format. And that's good because we're going to be up this back to native resolution next, and so it's good to make that comparison and have that, uh, that, that little visual reference um, in the forefront of your memory as we do that. So to start the conforming process, we have to begin that by, that by bringing in the native files and then up the sequence back to the full HD. Strictly speaking, I could have done this in the previous stage rather than bringing in all proxies, um, just by pointing to the native media rather than the proxies. Um, but I wanted to actually show the process as a separate process, so you understand that that is, you know, that that is something that uh, that sometimes needs to be done. Okay, so how do we do that? The first thing that we need to do is we need to come into our uh, into our um, project panel and we need to um, and we need to uh, basic, basically just delete our conform folder so I've just selected that there and hit the delete button and, uh, and the effect of that essentially is that it takes all the media back offline I'm just going to undo that for a second and then do it again just so I can point something out that I skipped over which is this uh, this alert this alert is basically saying hang on a minute you're deleting a clip you're deleting media from the project that is already existing in some sequences are you sure you want to do that well of course we know that our uh, clips are inside a sequence so yes we want to do that and as I said that takes the media offline so now I want to bring in the native media so I'm just going to again just click on my demo folder there and I'm going to come to file input folder and this time I'm going to choose my native folder and open again I can I can just accept the import options the uh, there's nothing nothing changing in there we haven't got any new scripts in here yet so I can just accept that 
um, and it will load in the project. Obviously the amount of time it takes to do that will depend on a variety of things such as the amount of clips it needs to take in, the resolution, the speed of the computer that you're working on, maybe the speed of the server that you're accessing the files from. So a whole bunch of things will determine that speed. But you can see now that, uh, that that's brought in the native media. We can see that the native media is all present and correct, or at least I hope so. Okay, we haven't yet got the animatic, so I might as well bring that in. So again, so again, select my um, select my demo file, file, uh, import file, and go into the animatic and pick that. There it is, and also maybe the audio. So file, import file, and there's the audio. Okay, so now we've got rid of all the proxies out of our out of our media, uh, out of our project. But at the moment, we haven't yet uh, we haven't yet got these uh, got these connected in. So essentially, it's the same process as before. So uh, again, I'm just going to max the max the spreadsheet. Uh, we and I'm going to select everything there just by by Control A. And then I'm going to, in fact, I'm not going to do that. I'll just cancel that out because my files are, in, are all in different folders. So, uh, oh, I will. I'll get, the, I'll get the majority in this way. So I'll choose my native folder like that and pick open, accept the, uh, the conform options and let that spin through the, uh, the, the project. And that's brought in 42 out of the 53 clips. And we can see that the, uh, that the audio track is still still sat there waiting for uh, waiting to be connected so I'll do that individually uh, and again I just need to come out of the native and into there just to hook that up again I can accept the conform rules and you can see that's reconnected those four the credits I can ignore the animatic I've got a couple of instances of that in fact, there's four or five so I'll just select all of those match the media and come into the animatic and select it. So this can be a little bit tedious, but you can see that relatively quickly we've got our project uh, fully connected. And you can see now that we've got all of our footage in place. We're still at the half res resolution, which is a problem now because obviously our files are much bigger and therefore they're not uh, they're not framing correctly. They're too big for the frame, so we just need to switch that back to the 1920 by 1080. And now we are back at full resolution. And if we if we take a look at these clips by comparison with the previous ones, I think we played it from about there onwards, and you can see that the quality of the image is now much better, and that's because we're now looking at our edit through the native media rather than the proxy media. So the proxies have served their purpose for the project. They've obviously allowed the editors to uh, to work through and construct the edit very quickly. Uh, we've been able then to take the uh, the EDLs and their uh, in, into this software, conform and bring the project um, up back up to the native resolution. Okay, so let's move on to the next part. If we just, uh, if I just zoom in a little bit here, and we take a look at the timeline, and we also look, take a look over here at the at the graph. You can see that the um, that the file naming conventions on these clips are not the most intuitive uh, in the in the world. They're very long. They're not going to be very helpful for conforming the project, and even more so when we start to break out specific shots for for visual effects. It would be nice for it to have a better naming convention than this. Okay, so I'm going to use some automated tools to do that for us inside uh, inside Nuke Studio. Uh, but to do that, I'm going to need to switch over to the editing uh, workspace, which again is going to take my my interface out of the uh, capture area. So I just need to drag it back. Um, this is, uh, you, you know, this this looks like a bit of a pain, and it really is a bit of a pain. But it's not, uh, it's nothing to do with the software. It's purely down to the sort of the idiosyncrasies of um, of the screen screen capture software. Okay, so um, so I'm in the editing uh, interface now. I'll just reduce the the size of the. In fact, I'll try and just compress these 
a little bit so we've got a maximum amount of space and then just bring these together a little bit so I can see all of my clips in the timeline okay so the way to do this I'm actually not bothered about these clips because these are just reference files that the editors have put there just so that we know which piece of green screen belongs in which clip I'm only really interested in the principal photography so I'm just going to drag a marquee and select all of the clips ins inside there okay and then I'm going to right click choose to editorial which I, I accept is outside of the screen capture but trust me if you cl right click on this there's an option called editorial and within that editorial there's an option called rename shots so there's no easy way of me being able to show you that so I'm just going to click it and bring up the dialogue okay so that's what the dialogue looks like uh, this is the joys of working inside relatively small uh, spaces for screen capture purposes. Uh, but you can see that this is what it looks like, and, it, and we've got a couple of options in here. But one of the th one of the ones I want to use is I want to use sequential uh, renames. So I want it to basically number name my shots: shot one, shot two, shot three, shot four, etc. Okay, so uh, so. You can see that we get hashtags there. What that's going to do is number incrementally. There's about 35 clips here, so I don't need um, I don't need to have any more than two um, integers there. It will name them 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, all the way to until it until it finishes, and that's okay. I want it to start at shot one, and I want it to increment by one at a time. So it'll be shot one, shot two, shot three, etc. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to hit the rename button now. And we can see that that's done that straight away. So we can see now that all of my clips are named sequentially. You can also see that the long name is actually sort of appended. But that's okay. We can see that each of our, num each of our name shots are sequentially, uh, se sequentially um, numbered now. So whilst this is a relatively short sequence, I'm hoping that you can appreciate how labour saving this feature can be. Imagine that you're working on a, a sequence consisting of more than 200, maybe 500 shots. That would be quite a laborious task doing that. So having a tool that automates that process is really quite, is really quite cool. Okay, so the next step in the workflow is to check the conformed edit for, uh, for accuracy and we do that against the original. So the standard way to do this is to line the edit up against the proxy edit which, uh, which, is, is, which we saved as an offline file or was saved by the editorial staff as an offline file for this very purpose. And we're looking for anomalies. In a VFX pipeline this is done by the editorial staff and normally passed on with the EDL as I've kind of tried to emulate in this tutorial series. Okay, so I'm just going to switch back to the conforming workspace. Again, I'll, oh, this it already was in the conforming workspace, hence the reason why it hasn't uh, jumped to, to maximum screen. Um, and there's a couple of there's a couple of ways I could bring in the um, that I could bring in the uh, the proxy file. I could just do what we've done every time so far by going into the project going into the offline folder um, and selecting it there so I could I could do that but Nuke Studio provides a, a great way to actually uh, deal with this which is the set reference media by doing this we can actually access the offline file from the um, from the project panel without even having to bring it into the bin okay so that's what I'm going to do now um, and I'm just going to draw your attention quickly to the timeline. You can see that we, we have our three video tracks and we have our audio tracks down here. Um, so when I click the set reference media and I choose my proxy edit, you see that this actually creates a new track below the video track one. And inside this track is my reference media. Okay. And this is fantastic. For, for checking. If I scroll down a little bit further you can see that it's also brought in reference media for the audio which it's failed to decode. That's because it, it's, this is a visual check and it's not expecting to receive audio. So it doesn't know what to do with these in a, in a reference context. 
but it doesn't matter because we don't need them. We're only really interested in this video reference. I think one immediate check that you have to do is to make sure that the reference media is the same duration as the, um, as the edit. Um, if there's a difference between the reference media and the edit, that's a sure, a sure sign that there's a, there's a problem with, the, with it because obviously the durations of the, of the clips are different so there's almost bound to be some misalignment. So that would be a problem. But you can see here that it's lining up perfectly in, in its duration so that should, be, that should be great. Now occasionally when we work with, uh, when we, when we work with this conforming, uh, we find minor misalignment issues um, where maybe a, a retime clip hasn't been correctly interpreted or something like that. Um, and I just want to kind of go through the uh, the process of how we would perform this check. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try and make as much space in the viewer as possible for this particular process. Um, and uh, and essentially, um, what Nuke Studio allows us to do is it allows us to load two video tracks into the buffer. Um, and this is great for undertaking comparisons. And essentially, it's very similar to the regular Nuke viewer controls okay so the way that we would do that is that we would select say for example our reference media and type 1 which loads it into buffer 1 and then we would choose our track 1 and type 2 and that loads the track 2 into the um, into the second buffer and you, you can kind of see a side by side thing going on here I'm actually going to Put those and stack those horizontally. So what we're actually seeing here is we're seeing our reference video on the left, and we're seeing our um, we're seeing our um, our edit, our conformed edit on the right. So what we can do now is we can go through our our clips and we can just look for any anomalies, particularly at the cut points. So what we'd expect there is for the cut to happen at exactly the same time. And we're just looking for any kind of anomaly. So in my particular case, I'd be working through these and making sure that the cuts occur at exactly the same time. Okay, I want to show you what might happen if this if this didn't uh, if this if there was a slight misalignment. So to do that, I'm just going to switch to the trim tool. I'm just going to come here and I'm just going to um, just going to try and offset this a little bit. Okay, can you see that I've just nudged this forward a little bit in space. Okay, so if we look at our cuts now on the timeline, come here for example, you can see that, that there's a slight gap by which the cuts are happening. So this is what would, would happen if there was a misalignment issue. So the, clearly the way to deal with that is to, um, is, is to get that lined absolutely perfectly up. Okay. If there are problems uh, along the way with this, uh, you know, with misalignment at various points, then we would typically use these kind of trim tools inside um, inside the editing workspace of New Studio just to get things absolutely right and make them match so that this side and this side will absolutely bang on. So that would just basically be like fine tuning the uh, the edit. It's unusual to, to have to do that, particularly with modern EDLs are pretty good at, uh, at, at, at interpreting this exactly. It's also worth, worth, worth pointing out here that um, that there are different ways that Nuke Studio provides us to actually look at this. We can see that we're looking at this through the horizontal view. We can also look at these sort of vertically aligned. Um, we can also use a, um, a wipe which is a really good tool which we can basically move into specific areas based where we're looking, we're focusing on a particular area, for example, if there's a weird anomaly here, like an artifact or something like that, we can move our, our, our join into that area. We've got a little opacity tool here which we can, which allows us just to take, take that wipe on and off so we can actually see the differentiation between the two sides. Uh, we, can, we can rotate that if we wanted to, if we needed to sort of look down a particular line that, that wasn't vertical or horizontal, we can do that. So the wipe feature, I like the wipe feature, I've always liked the wipe feature in, in, in the regular Nuke and I think it's great that it's in here as well. So there, sort of, I mean there are others as well, but they're three sort of common ways that we can, uh, that we can use to, uh, to check the conforming of our video track against the offline edit. So as I said from here on in I would just basically be going through this entire ed edit fairly, in a fairly meticulous way 
until I was happy that it fully conformed to the offline proxy and then and pretty much only then would I remove the reference track. So I'm going to say that I'm happy enough with this now so I've come to my reference track I'm right clicking edit delete and I'll do I'll do the same with the uh, with the two uh, audio tracks that have been populated with the reference so again edit delete edit delete so I'm back to my two audio tracks and my three video track scenario so I'm going to wrap up here 30 minutes in so I think that's a reasonable place to stop uh, so we've imported the EDL we've brought the sequence up to native resolution we've uh, we've named our shot sequentially and uh, and we've conformed the edit to the offline uh, reference so we're kind of like at a good place to move on from this point so I'm going to pause the pause the video here uh, I hope you found this informative and I hope that you'll feel able to apply this to your own projects